Nicole here at Almonica. This is our first um, parent Zoom Q&A session for third grade. So bear with us as we figure out this new technology for us and um, have interpretation channels. Hi, I'm Annie Lee. I'm a third grade teacher. Um, I met a few of you today. Some of these faces look familiar. Hoping to meet a few more tomorrow. Um, this is my ninth year teaching, my fifth year at Almonica, and I'm hoping to meet all of you in person at some point this school year. Hi, I'm Hilary Moldovan. I've already met a few of you this morning, and also I did teach Camp Achieve for the Almonica incoming third graders, so I've seen some of you from there. This is my 16th year teaching, my third year at Almonica. Hi, I'm Christine Kenyon. I'm uh, the school counselor at Almonica, and I'll be teaching wellness lessons on Wednesdays. And I'm Megan Valentine. I've been teaching for seven years with the Beaverton School District, and I have um, been at Almonica for now my fourth year. And I hope you all didn't get blown away yesterday. And we are also, I'm also, and the whole third grade team is looking forward to hopefully meeting you in person sometime soon this school year, hopefully. <laughs> Hi, my name is Deanne Weisgerber. I am the English language teacher and I do intervention services and I actually am a co-teacher. So I do a variety of different things with the third grade team. We work closely together. This is my, I think sixth or seventh year at Almonica and I've been teaching for 16 or 17 years. Um, and I'm also working with the candy team. So hopefully I'm excited to meet you guys. Looks like Ms. Alt is keeping up with everyone. Good. Um, are there any other specialists online who'd like to introduce themselves, please? Hello, my name is Sarah Heatherly and I have been teaching music for 18 years, but this is my first year at Elmonica. So I am really looking forward to seeing your faces and learning your names and um, learning how Elmonica works and joining the team. Another specialist? I think that's everybody. I think Mr. Nelson needs to jump on, but he said something about his video. He doesn't have a microphone. Okay, well, everyone should remember Mr. Nelson. He probably yeah. no introduction to third graders. Um, if not, you will see his face in an assembly soon. I'm absolutely certain of it. Actually, he's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. All right. Hi, I'm Greg Nelson. Um, I know a lot of you from last year and the last three years. This year I will be the student manager here at Almonica and look forward to working and supporting your families. <laughs> okay, that was awesome. All right, everyone. So um, what I would like to ask for us to do just so that we can manage um, everybody who's in our Zoom room with us, if um, all of our lovely families, although you're beautiful to see, um, I would really like it if you could turn off your video so that you can focus on the, um, the teachers who are in front of you um, when they're answering their questions. Ms. Alt. Thank you. And I'll say that uh, one more time because we have some new guests to join. If um, uh, oh, oh, I would like to see like and you. hear all teachers, um, but our guests, our parents and, and students, if you could turn off your video um, and your um, uh, um, audio, that would be fantastic. And then now we're going to jump into questions and answers. Um, Mr. Nelson and I are going to take turns. Um, we had a few places where you could post questions. We'll start first with the, with the, um, the Google form. I didn't see any questions in the comments from the um, YouTube video. And then we will go into um, the chat room um, and we will take turns. Uh, 
Also remember if there's awkward pauses, it's because I'm either admitting somebody or I'm waiting for Ms. Alt uh, to catch up and uh, interpret what we've just said. Excellent, so I will start um, with the first question and on the Google form, our first question was, oops. Okay, so um, could, could we please have the option to print, complete and scan and upload some assignments? Um, that is a great question. Yes, most of our assignments in third grade are going to be via Seesaw. Um, the documents that are on there, if you go to the assignments, you should be able to print off of Seesaw itself. Some of our assignments, sorry, I'm waiting for Brie. Some of our assignments will be um, via Google, Google Docs or Google Slides. So that might be an easier way for you to print them. A lot of our day is going to be synchronous, meaning that the students will be on Zoom with us with Zoom open on one side and their workspace. So they'll be kind of doing a lot of the work with us throughout the day. Excellent. Um, and I don't see Mr. Nelson's microphone on, so I'll jump to the next question and then have him do the third one. Um, we have Almonica Library books from last year. When should we return them and will there be opportunities to check out more books? Ms. Wise Gerber, do you want to answer that one since I told you the answer? <laughs> I sure will. Yeah, actually, this was something I was wondering myself. So, um, yes, there'll be an opportunity for you guys to go back and um, bring the books to school and return them and check out. At, but at this point, we don't know what that process is going to look like. So it might be a little while before we can actually start that process of checking out books. Okay, Mr. Nelson, you are on. Would you like to read a question? Oh, it says Ms. Kenyon is going to be helping with the questions in the chat. Um, yeah, so just looking in the chat, I am not seeing questions that were posted, so I don't know. I do see one uh, hand raised. Um, could our guest who's raising their hand, would you please um, jump to the chat, which is the little speech bubble at the bottom of your screen, um, and type your question, please? It looks like we do have a question from Caleb's parent in the chat. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kenyon, you want to read that? Yeah. Uh, we need assistance with Seesaw sign up, when to pick up the Chromebooks and other school supplies. So we are brand new in Oregon, just moved from East Coast. Excellent. Would you like me to answer that question, panel? <laughs> um, Let's see, uh, Seesaw sign up, uh, that is a great question. Connect with the classroom teacher assigned and they can either do a Zoom call like this to get you um, connected correctly um, or a telephone call that can probably take place this week. Um, Chromebooks, we do have, uh, we had a Chromebook pick up last week. Um, at this point, if you need, still need a Chromebook, um, the best thing is to um, send an email to SHD, which is Students Help Desk at Beaverton, I'm typing it in the chat. Um, and if you send an email, this will go directly to our technology specialist and he will make an appointment for you to pick up um, the Chromebook either tomorrow or Friday are highly likely, but there, there will be more opportunities. Um, then other school supplies. We will have um, a student success kit school supplies available this Thursday from two until four. Um, so you're welcome to come pick up some school supplies at that time. Ms. Kenyon, would you mind reading the next question? Oh, wait, I need to wait for Brianne, hold on.
Okay. Are you replacing the Chromebooks for all students with iPads for all students? Ms. Moldavon, do you know the answer to that one? The third through fifth grade are staying with Chromebooks, I believe, but they will be getting new ones as they come in. That's something that we're looking forward to, but at this point, they're staying with the Chromebooks they have, but the iPads are for kindergarten and first grade and second grade. The next question is, I wasn't able to return pick up a new Chromebook um, probably last Friday. That's fine. Um, in the, in the um, chat, I put in um, shd at beaverton.k12.or.us. That is send an email to that email address or call the student help desk. You can find that phone number on the BSD website um, and arrange a time to come and pick up um, a Chromebook. Ms. Kenyon? I'm just waiting for Brianne. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, will this be recorded for those who are unable to attend? Yes, this meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Valentine. <laughs> I'll I answer you. Record. Okay. Yes. Okay, it's being recorded. <laughs> yes. I'm not sure about the translation piece, how that works, but it is from my end, as far as I know, recorded. So. Okay, and my son's current Chromebook that is borrowed from Elmonica is showing an error message and cannot access the internet. That's a great opportunity for an exchange. Um, email the student help desk um, and just let them know you need to uh, make, make an exchange and they will arrange. Or it's Stephen Rathati. Um, he will be replying to you on a date and a time to come and do that. And I think I saw a question about evaluation. Um, what is the evaluation process to assign grades to st students at the end of the semester? Ms. Ballantine, are you good for that one? I think this is something that uh, as a grade level team and as a district, we're still in discussion of what that exactly looks like, but we are working hard on creating curriculum that meets all the standards and looking for ways to assess students with reading and writing and math and our other um, subject areas like health science and um, social studies. We do um, ERLA assessments um, as usual um, and we'll be doing that obviously virtually this year. So that's one of those assessment pieces we'll be using. Um, we will all, oh, you know, and it just occurred to me, I forgot we are also using Dreambox as well. It's one of our assessment pieces. Um, a parent's wondering if we're getting new QRs for Dreambox or Epic? Yes. I can answer that. That in the third grade, they don't use the QR codes. They'll be using more of their login codes and they will be getting those specific for them. It's their lunch ID number and we'll help them get into that. And when you communicate through either to any of the teachers via Seesaw, those messages are just seen by your, myself and you. So they are, may be a way that we can send your uh, students password, et cetera. If they don't remember their lunch number, we have ways of getting that information to them. If they don't use a QR, they'll actually be logging in with a key code and their own ID. And the next question I saw was, um, we have our Chromebook from last spring. Should we keep that one or return it for a new one um, to us? Uh, yes, hold on to your current Chromebook. Um, there will be a deployment of new Chromebooks in the next couple of months. 
So all of them will be traded at some point. Um, but the one you have now or that you pick up now um, will be an old one. Uh, but we, we will be deploying new ones um, in the coming weeks. But don't wait. There's a lot of, a lot of school time between now um, and then. And I want to say thank you to um, Rachel. She added the help desk information. Um, apparently, I only typed it to uh, Ms. Valentine and not everybody. So thank you, Rachel, for um, putting uh, the help desk information into the chat. Go ahead, Ms. Kenyon. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Oh, nope. here's one. Okay. Um, what level of support is needed for students from parents during the online learning? I can answer that. Um, hopefully not a lot. This dip, big difference between the spring and this school year is that um, we're gonna be online for a lot of the day. Third grade is hoping from about 8.30 until 2.30 with some lunch breaks in between and lots of different brain breaks um, throughout the day. But the majority of their time will be spent in a Zoom session with us where we'll be launching a lesson and then they will stay online while they work. Um, this should take a lot of that pressure off of you as a parent to have to try to um, do a lot of teaching on the side. Um, they may need a little bit of support from you, but the majority of their time will be spent in the classroom with us. And is there any discussion or planning related to hybrid model for education? I'll answer that one when I see Brianne's ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Yes, there is lots of discussion. Um, the, all schools uh, in our district are, uh, well, uh, throughout the state of Oregon are required to put together a plan um, for when students return. So we are prepared with um, how we're grouping students, um, how students will get in the building, how they will move around the building, how they will exit the building uh, to make sure that they are following um, uh, physical distancing practices. Um, as you saw when Mr. Nelson came in, um, I put my mask on because we are required to wear them unless, um, of course, we have to follow all the, the same rules uh, the rest of the state does as far as keeping ourselves um, and the people that we work with safe. Um, right now, we do not plan to return or have students return um, before uh, mid-November, um, but we will, we will know better by the end of October um, if the Oregon Department of Education and the Oregon Health Authority and the governor um, make the decision that we can return to a hybrid model um, in November. Um, and even if the hybrid model does happen, parents still have the option to continue comprehensive distance learning um, from home as they will be doing right now. Um, we are not demanding that students return when we open up the hybrid model, um, but just that it will be an option when um, we've met all of the, the metrics um, outlined by the governor and the state um, to let us know when it's safer. Um, I don't think we can ever say safe but when it is safer uh, for students to return to school. And there should be a basic plan found on the school district website for each one of our schools. Um, and just know that there are, as a committee and other uh, staff members who have worked on that, maps that have been drawn and details that have been outlined. And of course, when we get closer to having children in, with us again, um, we'll be meting out some of the finer details like how and when to use the bathroom, et cetera. Um, I think Mrs. Miss All is trying to figure out how to translate that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're working on it.
Thank you, Ms. Alt. Okay. Are parents allowed in the Zoom meetings during class time? Go ahead, Ms. Valentine. So um, there's a couple things that um, involve that could involve parents or not. We are actually going to be asking parents to not necessarily be part of our in sessions unless they are offering to be a parent volunteer. So if anybody would like to be a parent volunteer as uh, and being part of our lessons, then that is an opportunity for families to be involved. But we're going to be asked that during live sessions that it's just student in front of the screen with teacher support um, via Zoom. And to add on to that answer, um, parents who are volunteers have to go through the volunteer background check process um, and the um, classroom teachers will just verify that they have been um, had the volunteer background check before allowing them. And then we are also asking this, this is new for us, but we are also asking that parents are um, participating in a zoom meeting from their own device not from over the shoulder of, of their child, but they have their own device and their own space. Um, parents will be always with another adult in any Zoom session. So if there's multiple uh, parent volunteers, it is possible to do some smaller group work, but um, we will always make sure that parents are protected and kids are protected um, by making sure that more than one adult is in a Zoom room with any volunteers. And I'm sure we'll figure out some more rules along the way, but that's what we know right now. There's another question in the chat. Uh, will the teachers be teaching from the classrooms? So it looks more like a learning environment that they know, just so there is less of a chance. Oh, sorry, I lost the end of that. Yeah. Uh, less of a chance for distractions. Who's got this one? I can go. Oh, oh, Deanne, I'll let you go. <laughs> okay. Um, I think at this point, most of the classroom teachers are working from um, a teaching space in their house. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of both. Um, I really think it depends, for the most part, with the teacher. But I think most of we, uh, most of them, have actually decided to work from home. Can I add on to that? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so one of the reasons why we want to stay home or go into work is we do want to make sure that we maintain our safety. But those of us that are working from home are making sure we have an environment that is as quiet as we possibly can be and that the activities that we do are engaging enough for students to be actively involved in their learning. And some, some teachers throughout the school have created their own virtual classrooms. So while it might not look like a classroom in the background, it, there's a virtual classroom that students can access as well. Okay, Ms. Heatherly, you added some information um, about music. Did you wanna talk about that a little bit? Sure, it's very brief. Um, third grade teachers will have a 30 minute live Zoom class with PE and music teachers once a week. And that is um, something that other specialists will kind of alert you as to when their times are as well. And then for PE and music at least, um, we also have a time slot in the week that is set aside for completing that Seesaw assignment. And that will help scaffold students being able to see us, ask questions of us, um, giving us a chance to walk through the lesson with students and really make them successful without having to ask parents for too much involvement. I also put in there that as PE and music specialists, uh, we can also arrange to meet one-on-one -on -one with students for support and answering parent questions. 
So please feel free and welcome um, to reach out to your music and PE teacher. We need help. We want to see you be successful. I also want to add that um, Ms. Heatherly mentioned there's one um, lesson where you're Zooming with your PE and music teacher and uh, also in the same time slot, but on other days of the week, um, that's when you might have a videotape lesson or, or, being, or, or responding to something that's posted on Seesaw, but that, that half an hour is the same. Um, it looks like it's from 10.30 to 11 uh, every day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So even if the assignment is on Seesaw for music, um, the classroom teachers and the kids uh, you know, take a break and do something different for those 30 minutes. That is the allotted time to complete the work for either music or PE. But I just wanted to make that super clear. So every, every day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesdays will be different. That's a different, a different lesson will be happening on Wednesday. Um, but those four days per week at 1030 is always going to be a music live lesson or um, a response uh, to a videotaped lesson or assignment. Okay, um, are there any more questions? We have a little more time dedicated to the third grade team and our specialists to answer your questions. And it's okay if you don't have more questions. That means that maybe we got them all answered in the, in the um, YouTube video, which we're novices at, but I think that the third grade team, team did a great job. This is McNamee. Yes. I just wanted to share one of the web pages that they can go to for most of their information because they have Google Chrome. If you go to the Beaverton webpage, Beaverton has up in the corner the student uh, bookmarks. It will look different on their Chromebook. But in their bookmarks is where they can get most of what they're going to need. Bookshelf, Brain Boost will be leading them, but they can do them on their own because they're pretty fun and the kids love them. Clever Dashboard, which is how they will be accessing Epic, Dreambox, Seesaw. Student Source has access to different activities. We are not using Canvas in third grade, but that is something they'll be looking forward to next year. And Epic for books, Dreambox for math. We're not using Google Classroom, but it does have a variety of things. And their Seesaw, Scratch. This is a really useful source that they can come to and find out, how do I get to Epic? You go to your bookmarks and you get to Clever and that will get you to everything. There's a couple more questions. Um, how can parents cope with having more than one child attending online schooling? Um, I can speak to that a little bit. Uh, I was in a parent meeting earlier today with somebody that asked this exact question. Um, I know it's hard when you're juggling two kids that are on, two or more kids that are trying to share a space. One thing that is super helpful are headphones, specifically headphones that have the microphone attached like mine do. Um, other, if they don't have the micro, microphone when the student wants to talk, they have to unplug and it gets a little tedious. Um, so if you can find these, they're handy. And that I think solves a lot of the problem of kids trying to get work done while they're in the same room.
Thank you, Brian. Um, and I'll, I'll um, ask and answer the next question. Um, I appreciated last year how the assemblies really highlighted diversity and were inclusive. And Mr. Nelson will continue. That will be, that's his um, call to fame. Um, and then the question asks, can you speak to any of the anti-bias, anti-racist work that the staff district is involved in? Um, certainly, we have um, done some work this summer as a staff. Um, one of the books um, that we, we read um, this summer is called uh, Unconscious Bias in Schools. Um, there was a book club um, uh, of, that met on Wednesdays over the summer for some independent study and conversation. Um, we, it, that also included um, people of color uh, are at our school and they were included in that committee. Um, and we have now a team that has um, self-formed. So people who want to be a part of the uh, anti-racist um, and equity team um, presented last week. They did an activity with staff um, based on some of the resources provided by um, the school district and they will continue tomorrow um, and do another activity with staff to continue that work. And a second book has been selected. Um, I can see it in my mind's eye, but I can't remember the title or the author right now, uh, but that will also be um, another uh, book group that we are working on, um, working towards. Um, in this next school year. And then also um, one of our classroom teachers, one of our fourth grade teachers uh, did some of the work on the four lessons um, that will be taught uh, in, as part of the social studies um, curriculum on anti-racism um, uh, in the, the coming year. And she shared that information with our staff last week. Um, but it's nice to have an actual staff member who's been a part of developing um, those specific lessons that will be taught um, this school year. I think we have one more question in the chat. Should we have separate areas for each child to attend meetings to avoid distractions? It would be optimum, of course, if each child had their own learning area, but spaces are small, that can be difficult. As uh, Mrs. Lee said, headphones is a big help if they don't want to be together at a kitchen table. One thing that we were kind of asking that they're not on their bed because it's just too easy to lay down and get comfortable. You're not ready to learn, getting the blood moving through your body. I've had students sitting and putting their computer on a debt on a the seat of a chair. That way they're sitting up, but they do have their own spot. And you can put those in various spots around the room. We will be with them more than we were last year. So we're going to be making sure that they're tuned into us, that they're going to be working with us. So it's not going to be, I'm done, let's go bother my brother, like I might have done back in the day. They're going to be busy. We're going to keep them busy. We're going to keep them active. We're going to keep them engaged. So they are really with us more throughout the day. So they're not going to be wandering about needing entertainment. We'll be having them, they'll be working, they'll be reading, they'll be productive. And Mrs. Weisgerber, I saw your hand up. You're muted though. Okay, um, do we have any more questions? I just have one more thing once Brian's done. If that's okay.
Okay, I just wanted to kind of go back to what um, Mrs. Moldovan was talking about and the question regarding kids and a lot, being able to help kids and find a, an adequate adequate workspace, I guess, for the kids. Um, I have two kids myself, and I'm also working from home some of the time. Um, a couple of suggestions that I, uh, along with getting the headphones, um, but I've, I've really created like a schedule. So I've tried to make it as normal and as, so, as much like school as I can. So creating a, a good workspace for each one of them, even if it's at the same table, um, and allowing them an opportunity to kind of maybe just make it their own. And that's their space that they're gonna learn in as well as just having a regular routine. So we have, I've already told them, we've kind of went through what, what's gonna be expected. And sometimes, you know, for most kids, just having that routine is, is really helpful. Okay, um, one thing before I wrap it up and we say goodbye, um, that is I send out a, a newsletter for families just about every Friday. Um, this week, it came out on Saturday. I know you'll forgive me for being a day late. Um, and they are posted on the Beaverton School District website underneath under El Monica on our webpage um, under About Us Parent Newsletters. So all the information that you need is typically sent out on, on Fridays. If you are not getting it or there's two in your family that want to receive um, the newsletters, uh, please call the school office so we can update um, the activity in School Messenger so that you receive uh, the communications. And you should expect to hear something just about every Friday. And since I don't see any more questions popping up, I would like to thank profusely um, the first or the third grade team for going first, uh, for having um, our, our very first um, Q&A session with teachers and specialists, uh, and also Ms. Alt for um, having to talk the entire time um, and translating and, and doing this for the very first time. I very much appreciate uh, all the hard work that this team has done uh, putting together their presentation um, and helping me figure out how to get it uploaded on YouTube, um, adding caption slides in multiple languages. Um, and I just want to say thank you. I appreciate how much this team works together um, to make this happen for parents. Um, if you have any uh, follow-up questions, uh, please email the classroom teacher or you can email myself or Mr. Nelson, if there are more um, general uh, school questions um, or anything having to do with enrollment um, or anything attendance related, um, you can email the office. So we are here for you uh, and we are looking forward to a different, kind of exciting as we learn new things year, but we are also desperately looking forward to having children return hopefully sooner than later. So thank you everybody. It was wonderful to be with you tonight. Kelly, it looks like there's a question about the audio real quick before we get off. People are wondering when that's going to be, or the recording, when that will be available. Great question. Um, that, that's an excellent question. Uh, I know that YouTube has the option for us to blur out faces. So um, please give us a, a little time. Um, I and the specialists need to do five more of these in the next two school days. So please give us uh, perhaps Friday or over the weekend to figure out how to adapt the Zoom video to protect, 
protect people's identity. Um, all of the teacher faces are fine to see their names, but I want to protect everyone else who joined this meeting. Um, and as soon as we figure out how to do it, um, we will post it um, on YouTube and we'll begin organizing things by channels. So we'll have a third grade YouTube channel. You'll be able to go back and um, see the back to school night or the back to school presentation, um, the specialist presentation.